Family meals become hassle-free with these three freezer-friendly recipes that'll have dinner in the table in under 30 minutes. As far as theme nights go, pizza night is probably one of the biggest hits among kids and maybe adults alike. And this is a great way to make it so that it is even quicker to get on the table. Plus, everybody can customize their own pizza in advance, so everyone's gonna end up happy. And the key to these is a pita or lavash bread, either one works. What you're looking for is something where when you cut off the top or cut it in half, you're going to end up with that pocket inside and without the outsides being too, too thick because we want it to really act as our pocket without us having to take the dough and make it ourselves, like a calzone. I really like these ones because they're whole wheat and flax, so in addition to getting your kids to eat pizza, you're getting some fiber and whole grain in there. So if they're willing to you know, compromise on that, I think it's a great way to get some extra nutrients by just changing up what the dough is by using a whole wheat pita. All right, and so all we are going to do is we, you could cut it in half. I'm just gonna cut the top off of it because I think it makes it a little bit easier to fill when you have a little bit more than halfway to be working with to kind of cover your uh, pita. So then you see we have our pita pocket ready to rock. And it is super simple. This is absolutely something that the kids can make themselves. I was gonna put a handful of that cheese in there. And we're just going to stuff it first and then I'll show you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna just add the sauce right in a little bit. You could see that I had some time without a dishwasher because I like to minimize the number of plates that I'm getting dirty. Um, I am going to add some mushrooms and peppers in mine. I think that pizza night could be a good way to get your kids to try some vegetables in or on their pizza. There's other familiar flavors between the sauce and the cheese that are getting put together. So it's a nice way to get them on board with maybe trying something. And then what we're going to do is we're kind of just gonna shake it and let everything mix and move together. So we're making it, like I said, it's really fun. And then we're going to flatten it out into our pocket shape. Now you could do it two ways. On our shoprite.com recipe shop, these are pita panini pizzas. So you can use a grill press pan, to do a panini press type of preparation, or if you want, you can put it in the air fryer. That's what I like to do. Uh, three minutes in the air fryer, and these are ready to go. I do like to try and fold it underneath because that edge can curl a little bit, but if you fold it underneath, then you're going to run a better chance of it just being closed like that. And then I like to give it a little olive oil spray and a little sprinkle of either garlic salt or Italian seasoning on the outside so that way you get that crisp browning. Now, these are all freezer-friendly meals, so at this point you could freeze this, and then when you're ready to eat it, put it in the air fryer for about four to five minutes at 400 degrees, and you have your own pizza pocket. And the nice thing about this is, yes, it has the traditional pizza ingredients, your cheese, your sauce, but because you're making it, you have the opportunity to make the dough a little bit more nutrition dense. You have the opportunity to add some of your kids' favorite vegetables. You also have the opportunity, if you want to, these are vegan wraps. So if you want to switch out the cheese for a vegan or plant-based mozzarella, you can also make this plant-based very easily. And vegan pizza pockets might not be the easiest thing to find. So it's a great way to make it for those of your children who have certain allergies or even their friends who do. So then after you put this in the air fryer or on the panini press, you are left with these lovely, crispy, delicious pita pocket pizzas, totally customizable and great for any make ahead pizza night. Fewer meals are better for the freezer than a lasagna, but we're gonna kick it up a notch, making sure that not only do we add some lean protein and some produce, but we're also going to utilize a different ingredient for our lasagna noodles. We are going to use this side dish of scalloped potatoes as our lasagna noodles. That way you are microwaving the side dish and you don't have to turn necessarily the stovetop on and boil that water for the pasta noodles. So it's a different take on lasagna and it's got a couple of different vegetables in there, tons of flavor coming from those pre-seasoned scalloped potatoes and just a different version of a nice family meal. So I have some olive oil that I'm putting heated in a pan and we are just going to start browning our organic ground turkey. There we go. Oops. 
And you could use whatever ground meat you want. Um, I actually like to use chicken a lot of the time instead of ground turkey. It's just a personal preference of mine. But whatever works. And we just want to make sure we're getting this nice and brown. Because essentially, we're going to cook all the components, we're going to assemble it, and then when you are freezing a lasagna, you can at that point cook the lasagna, freeze it cooked, or if you want to freeze it uncooked and then do it frozen, totally up to you. And at this point, we're getting some nice color on there. I'm gonna add some Italian seasoning. And I like to be a bit heavy handed on that just because ground turkey, it is a leaner meat and we wanna get some good flavor in there. And then I am going to add copious amounts of spinach because as anybody knows, when you cook spinach, it wilts down into very little. And like I said, if you're going to take the time to make a meal that you wanna freeze and then have as a dinner another night of the week, I think as much as you can get done and as many components as you can get into that dish, you wanna try and do. So if you can put all of those elements in, which sometimes, depending on the kind of lasagna you make could be lacking, I think it's great to include your veggies in there so that way it's one less thing that you have to worry about, like making a salad or doing a microwave even vegetable. Now it's already in there. And I am just sauteing it. And you can see already, I put so much spinach in there and it is all wilting together. What I like about this too, this is a fun little tip, is if you are looking to put spinach into something and maybe your kids, you know, are a little bit picky with their greens, spinach in Italian cooking can look very much like basil. So if you take some fresh basil, you can mix that in. And then when they ask, what's the green? You can say, oh, it's basil, it's just an herb, it's not a vegetable. So if you wanna tell a little fib, I won't tell anybody. All right, so I'm gonna put some fresh basil in there. And then I have a couple of smaller cloves of garlic that I'm just going to put in there as well. Again, we do wanna flavor the filling, especially when we're using a leaner meat because we don't have the same amount of fat for flavor. All right, and in we go with that garlic, fantastic. All right, now we're gonna work on more filling, the cheese layer. So into a bowl, we are going to add, whoops, 16 ounces of regatta cheese. I'm using the part skim, just because I'm looking to keep this a leaner version of lasagna, that's why we use the ground turkey. And I like going for sometimes the bigger containers of things because if I like a recipe and I want to make it, I think it's always nice when you can make more of it so that you have it on hand. I'm gonna add about a third of a cup, I'm sorry, three quarters of a cup of Parmesan cheese, and then two eggs. And if you want to make this egg-free, honestly, I've made lasagna both ways where you have the egg part and you don't. I really do think it's personal preference, um, but it does add a nice layer to that filling. So totally up to you, but if you need to keep it egg-free, you can absolutely make this recipe without those eggs. Alrighty. And I am gonna add a little bit of Italian seasoning to this as well, because I think it is important to flavor all the layers. And with the ricotta, and especially with the Parmesan cheese, this is gonna be a little bit salty. So I just wanna balance it out with a little bit of that herbiness. There we go. All right. And now that that's all done, we're gonna put that to the side. I have some wholesome pantry marinara sauce here. I'm turning off my turkey layer and I'm getting ready to assemble. All right, so I've got my scallop potatoes here and that's going to act as our pasta layer. So we're gonna take our casserole dish and I begin with a little bit of that marinara sauce. And the thing is you can make this however you want. We like a dish that has a lot of customizable options to it. So if you wanna keep this more of like a white lasagna, you could do an Alfredo sauce if you would like to go that route. 
It's always nice to customize and by using some different ingredients, you're able to just um, create something different with the same recipe, which we love, especially for family meals. If your family likes something, that's what we want to focus on. And now we're just layering it. So we want to make sure we keep it nice and even. This is a pretty big casserole dish, so I think I'm going to be able to do three layers. All right. Now I am going to do my layer of scalloped potatoes in there. I love potatoes. Dare I say, I do like them more than pasta, and these are already flavored with that cheesiness. So you're really getting a lot of good flavor that you're not getting from that pasta, which is nice. All right. And then what layer am I up to? Oh, maracotta layer, a little bit of that. And this is nice and hearty. So the other thing that you can do here is you can serve it as an entire casserole or you can cut it up into uh, pieces and freeze it like that. So that way you have individual portions if you don't want to make it all at once. That way you have a couple of different meals. Okay. Another layer of our turkey. Whoop. Right. This is a hearty dish, which is what you want for a family meal because if you make this in advance, like I said, if you're gonna take the time to make something, you wanna make sure that you are feeding your family and it is worth the little bit of effort that you put in. So unlike maybe a faster meal that you would make on a weeknight, this is something that maybe if you have a little bit of time on a weekend, that you're gonna spend a little extra time preparing. Right, the rest of our agata layer on there. And we want to end with cheese on top because that's what's going to give it that browning because the lactose in the cheese is going to brown that up. I'm going to do one more sprinkle of the Parmesan and then I'm going to hit it with one more dash of the Italian seasoning and then like I said, you could cover it and freeze it now, or you could put it in the oven, covered for a half hour, uncover it for five minutes when you're ready to serve it, and you have a beautiful homemade scalloped potato lasagna ready to enjoy on a busy weeknight. Even though stir fries are a quick meal to make on a weeknight, when you don't have time, you don't have time. And stir fries, you can make them in advance and have them ready to go freezer friendly so that it's just a matter of heating them up. So essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to make our own sort of stir fry family meal that you would find bagged in a frozen section, but we're gonna make it all ourselves, which can be really nice, especially when you have kids or family members who maybe see that there's mushrooms in the blend on the fr freezer shelf and they won't eat it because there's mushrooms in there. This allows you to customize. So we are doing a Thai basil chicken stir fry. So I'm starting with my chicken and I have my separate cutting board. Definitely when you're mixing chicken and mixing vegetables, you want to make sure you are working with clean separate cutting boards or washing in between. So I will wash my knife in my hands when we are done with this. And I'm just cutting these into strips. I like to use the Wholesome Pantry Organic Thin Chicken Breast for this if I want something to cook quick. Obviously, the thinner you use the chicken, the better. If you are getting more of a family pack, you can always just pound the chicken out um, to make it more tender and to make it cook more quickly. All right. So what we're going to do is most of this is gonna go in plain and I'm gonna show you why. We're not gonna be doing a ton of seasoning. The point of cooking today is just getting ready. So I'm gonna add a little sesame oil and the majority of our flavor is going to live in our freezer bag for when we go ahead and cook it on the night that we are going to cook it. All right. And we go with our chicken. All right. Just wanna get the oil coating it. And then we're just gonna let it sit because I wanna get some good browning on that chicken. And I love sesame oil. I think there is just no better smell. It's such a nice fragrant flavor. It's a good one to have in your pantry. All right, let's focus on our veggies. 
So I'm gonna use some shallots. I like using shallots over onions sometimes for a stir fry or any of my uh, cooking because it's a milder flavor, but it's still a really nice flavor. So that is always a item that I tend to have on hand. Um, they add just a really nice punch. And they're very common in sauces because they melt into it. So similar to how I said you can customize the vegetables for this if your kids are picky. If your kids think that they don't like onions, using shallots is a great way to still get that onion flavor without kind of putting them off. Okay, in we go with the shallot. And that chicken is already browning very, very nicely. All right, I am also going to do some pepper slices. And this is just what, it's what we have on our recipe on shoprite.com, but this could be personal preference. Maybe if you don't like peppers, you wanna do some edamame and some broccoli. You can do some cauliflower rice and some shredded carrots. It is whatever you want and whatever proteins too. This way of cooking it, you're gonna see it's very customizable, but it's also a way to make a couple of stir fries ahead and they have them be different enough so that they're ready to go. And for the sake of just having smaller bites and pieces, I'm doing everything in little pieces. And then lastly, I'm just going to cut some green onions. This is gonna give it a different flavor than the shallots, but I just think it adds like a really, really pretty color. Nice pops of green. And then our green beans, we could put them in here now, but I'm just gonna add it to the bag. I like green beans to be crispy. You could also just um, microwave them, throw them in for a few seconds. It really depends on your preference for how you like to cook your vegetables but I'm just gonna add it to our bag when we're ready to put this together. You'll see what I mean. All right, so let me give this a nice toss. So what we're looking for here, we're looking for our chicken to get cooked to 165. And then whatever our vegetables do, I, like I said, prefer my vegetables to be on the more crunchy side. But if you like them to be more mushy, then let this cook a little bit longer. Totally fine. All right, I'm just trying to flip that chicken so that we get browning on all sides. Perfect. All right, so now we're going to make our sauce. Very simple here. I'm gonna do a little bit more sesame oil, just because I can't get enough. Then we have some oyster sauce, which is delicious. It's a thicker, more uh, syrupy umami flavor than a soy sauce. You could definitely use soy sauce, but this is gonna just give you a nicer kind of teriyaki adjacent, but that thicker compound just works really nice. And then more umami, just two dashes of fish sauce is what I am doing here. And then a juice of a lime. So whatever your sauce is going to be, if you've ever purchased, I'm actually, this is a really juicy lime, I'm just gonna do half here. If you've ever purchased a um, frozen meal. A lot of times the sauce will come in its own little baggie. I'm utilizing different parts of my spatula for first mixing tendencies. Okay, so we're gonna take a smaller bag and into the smaller bag we're gonna pour our sauce. Okay, and the reason that I'm doing it this way is because that way when we do reheat this, Instead of the sauce getting absorbed right now onto your proteins and vegetables and running the risk of not having it be saucy enough when you reheat it, by freezing the sauce separately in your bag, this is going to then defrost in your stir fry and that's going to make it saucier and just taste more fresh compared to when you maybe refrigerate or freeze something and have it as leftovers and that sauce is already absorbing. And then we have these little beauties. These Gerote frozen herbs are so fantastic. For one, it's a great way to have herbs on hand and flavoring agents to use in quick cooking, even if you are making this the night that you're going to eat it and not freezing it. But we can also put it into our freezer bag 
And then when we make it, those herbs, the same way as the sauce, are going to release the night that we make it, making it more flavorful when we have it. All right, so let me give this another toss. And we should be pretty good. I'm gonna show you how to assemble it now. The caveat is this is gonna be hot, so putting those <laughs> frozen herbs in there when it's hot, don't wanna do that under normal circumstances because those herbs are going to melt. But for the sake of just showing you how we're going to pack this up, now I have one of my bigger bags. I'm gonna take half those green beans. In they go. And then I am going to put my stir fry in here. Oops. And it's very, very important that you let your food cool before you put it into the freezer. You do not wanna put hot food or even warm food right into the freezer. You should always let it refrigerate first before moving it into that freezer, just from a perspective of food safety and temperature. So you're le learning a lot about food safety with our different cutting boards and everything. All right, almost done. One more scoop. And if you want to, you can, you know, microwave a rice or make a noodle the night that you're going to have this. And it's another way to switch it up. Okay, so that goes in there. And my sauce is gonna go in there as well in its separate baggie. And then you're going to take those little ginger, garlic, um, and basil frozen cubes. Oop, there we go. And like I said, if this were cool, we would be in good shape. And it goes, and you do the same for the ginger, whoop, the ginger <laughs> and the basil. Really as much as you wanna put in there and it'll be frozen. Zip it up, put it in the freezer, and you have your stir fry ready to dump out. And in five minutes, it'll be ready to go for whatever night you wanna eat it. Like and follow for more.